Hey, hello. Welcome to a video tutorial where uh, I am going to build a controller from scratch. And my name is Bill. I'm the maintainer and author behind React Talk Form. So without further delay, let's get into the code sandbox. So what I present in here, it's a very standard form which partially integrated with React Talk Form and we also have a controller component in here. So in this video tutorial, we're gonna build controller from scratch. So let's get started. First, we're gonna create the controller component. And as you probably would be familiar, Re React Talk Form controller is leveraging render prop. And if you're not familiar with the render prop, you can look up on React Docs. They have a very good explanation on what render prop is. So we're going to use render prop in here and we're going to pass down some of the props that's going to be required for this component, which is control, register, name, and groups. I believe we're matching exactly what we have except that new register method. That's okay. So let's get all these boy in here. Throw down in here. Let's get the controller. And let's work in all these props. Oh, actually, I do miss the render prop, which is the render. And we want to pass down the name, which we can call it a nice name for this component. And we can leave rules as it is for now. And we want to render something, which we want the controller component we actually created it on the top. Nice. Now it's formatted it. So these are the props that we required for this controller. And the controller component itself, it's pretty um, standard way of building control component. You have system, you have on change, and you have value. Now the first thing, let's making uh, the control itself appear first. So we just call the render props. It should appear and the first thing we want to do obviously um, in order for react talk form to aware that such input we want to register that input first. so we want to register that input and there is going to be few props coming out of it and we have name passing down as an argument so by doing so react talk form should be aware there are actually let's get rid of the validation for now Oops. There should be two inputs got registered, which is first name and last name. Cool. Now, so the register phase is working. So the second important part is actually sending the value back to React Hook form so we know what user is actually interacting with and validating them. So the register method. Once we get called, we can see what's inside. There are a few props get exposed, which is name, unchange, unblur, and ref. So we're going to leverage that and passing down as prop for the rendered prop. So we want to change unchange, props.unchange, and we also want to change, send down unblur, which is props.unblur. And the last but not least, we want the name as well. Cool. We got all the essential props we need for the input cells. So now we can basically passing down or spreading them, which is the kind of shortcut in here. Uh, let me see one dot. Cool. Nice, nice. So now we need to kind of identify which inputs that React Top Form need to know it's been interact with. So we want to be more specific. So we can go with oh, one passing down the name, which is going to be exposed in here. So we want to know which input we interact with. Actually, it should be target because we want to follow the standard of even target. And also we want to sending down the value, which in this case is going to be e or target or value. Oops, not W, E. And so, so let me talk about the, the kind of data flow happening in here, right? 
So first we as executing the register function. We got a four, we got a few props um, passing down, and now each prop will get injected into the random prop, which is coming down to the component itself in here. Then it gets into the input itself, and we're passing down all the props to the default input value, default state, and we're also invoking the function and sending down the event. So what this does is every keystroke, every unchange, we're invoking the function and letting the hook form know what's happening on the form. So let's just quickly try this out and submitting the button. Voila, we got the form uh, integrated with the React form already. So form data submission works. Next phase, let's sort out the validation. Now the validation is actually going to be very simple. So we enable the arrow objects first. And then let's just passing down rule as say required. Notice we're using extend, um, standard uh, native constraint API in here. Um, what is that? Oh, yep, not double. So required to get passing down, and we want to integrate rules into the register API. If you refer to the doc for the register method. The second argument itself is going to make the full validation for such as maximum length, minimum length required, and etc. Now we should have seen error float through. If we clear the input, if we do the submit, we should be seeing the error itself. Cool. So we got input sending to React Code Form, we got the validation, and the last piece. We want to actually dynamically updating the input itself in its isolated uh, environment, which is why it's kind of called a controller. It's uh, more like a remote control um, for the gamepad, basically. So if I want to send in data, say asynchronously, you got a uh, RESTful API or GraphQL, and you want to updating the value. So you would have using the API such as set value for that individual input and we're going to get that last name and we want to do a value including the API and we want to do that asynchronously so we want to give that one second you would have probably notice it's actually not working now and even the default value is not working and that's because uh, React talk form itself is not aware of the context of the input value just yet. So what are we going to do with this? We can use another, another hook, which is going to be called use watch. So with use watch, we can actually isolating the re-render and subscribing to the input value, and then we can just passing them down. So I think the first render is going to be working now. Uh, however, the asynchronous value, actually, let me just quickly show you. The asynchronous value, which is going to change test one to test, is not working. Why? Because our controller component doesn't aware of uh, derived props update. So we can do was use effect and putting the props to value as dependency and updating the value with props to value. Now, with all of that, we should be working with asynchronous uh, input validation as well. So you can see the render at the root still maintain as one, and input still get dynamically updated. So this is probably one of the core concepts that React took from every input itself. It's completely isolated individual. So it really helps you to scale up if you have a large and complex form without having to worry about the rendering, the performance, and there is a lot of work being done in React Hook form itself to making sure that your user will always benefit with a better smooth experience when interacting with the form. Cool. I think um, I think that's pretty much it. Like I want to share with you that the kind of inside what is happening. How does it you know Hook form know you know what your input is being registered? 
how to descend in data. It's all basically all the hooks that it kind of exposing to you and we composing them inside to have kind of, you know, even more powerful functionality within the controller. Um, so actually, before I wrap this uh, this video, uh, I can show you something even more. Uh, talking about composing, you can even have user form state inside. Now you will be having the arrow inside that component. So, uh, yeah, I forgot the control, and then we're passing down the name. And if we submitting it with empty, so you see, like it's really powerful the way that hooks can actually compose in and allow you to build in something really powerful at the component level. So now I exposed the kind of secret within the controller. You can actually build in your own. You can even build in your own kind of you know controller. Could be advanced. Could be doing something that transform value inside. Could be doing a lot of crazy stuff and leverage all this power thing from the hooks. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for perhaps the next video. Bye bye.